Hello, this is uh, Mike from HT Web Host LLC, and uh, I just wanted to show some uh, information about how I have Kali Linux running in a VirtualBox VM with the USB uh, Realtek drivers installed. I had some help from the people over at the LinkedIn post. I think it was Stefan that directed me to the correct github repository that i needed I, beforehand i was using the wrong repository that's why i couldn't get the drivers to be recognized anyways i'm going to show you the settings i have for the virtual box uh, vm as well as uh, the quick steps to install the drivers which was really quite simple uh, when it, i took a look at it so anyways uh, this is the the uh, github repository that you need and we'll go over that later and then we're going to go ahead and show you the settings in the VirtualBox VM I have. So I'm running VirtualBox on Windows but you obviously can run it on other operating systems. Uh, Linux you can run it on uh, Mac as well. So for everybody that's out there using a Mac. So this is the VM here that I have, the Kali Linux VM. I did a basic fresh install using the install ISO from the Offensive Security website. I'll go through the settings I have. I am running uh, an Intel CPU and uh, 32 gigs of RAM on my home machine here. So, but I I partitioned out about eight gigs of memory for it and four uh, processing cores. Under settings, general, I named my VM advanced here. I did bi-directional for copy and paste, so I can copy and paste uh, commands into the VM directly, which is very helpful. This is where I store my VMs. And, um, of course, you add description, whatever else you want to do. System is where I assign the memory, the boot order. Uh, I made sure these are, ch are checked. Processor, I assign my cores here. Didn't check any of this other stuff down here. This is my normal display. I added a little bit more memory for my display. Video memory. Storage. Uh, this is where you mount your ISO for installing. And then... Um, and whatnot, and I've already done that to install. Now, a network for network, I find that I like to use bridged instead of NAT, it works better for me, um, at least from what I've seen. So, I enable this and then I select bridged instead of NAT. And then from here, at advanced, I like to use the Intel Pro MT server for emulation. I always do uh, allow all. To, so all traffic is allowed routed through everything and then I randomize the Mac here by clicking that so that's pretty much that for that serial ports I don't need emulation on now this is the USB part so the adapter I have which I'll have a post down on the bottom where you can order it off of eBay it was twenty dollars which I thought was awesome it does 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands um, it uh, in here we want to make sure to enable the USB controller I'm using the 3.0 here and then what you have to do or what I did was I did add new USB device here and then select your retail your real tech after you plugged it in and that's pretty much it those are the settings I have and then okay and then we'll go ahead and fire up the VM see if it detects it now it's going to go ahead and detect the it should detect the the um, card because I've already installed the drivers for it but I will show you the little quick steps to install the drivers it's pretty easy so I'm going to go ahead and start the VM now and let's get it moved over here let's get it into full view, view mode I use you can do this by holding down control and hitting F and it'll give you full screen <coughs> I do have a password on the drive itself to even boot into it, so I'm going to type that in now. You can set this all up when you're installing Kali Linux. It's going to close out of that right there. Take a little moment. Type in my username and password. So there. And here we are. 
so obviously if you're going to be using the wireless utilities you know you can do Wi-Fi here down here and type in my password again and let's see if it detected the drive or the USB it should because it's already installed so if I do like a IP address command it didn't find it let's take a look here again real quick why it did not all right so I'm going to unplug my adapter and plug it back in uh, from the computer because sometimes uh, if you plug it in first before you fire up the VM, Windows detects it first and it has to have exclusive access. So I'm going to unplug it and plug it back in. Let's see if it detects it. Now if you're in, I'm going to shrink the window here. If you can see in here, it's looking for the USB right here, see? So... <clears throat> Hopefully it finds it here in a minute and then it'll install the drivers for it. Let's see if it found it. And it did. See here? So I know that it should now give me... And there it is. WLAN 0. So, rule of thumb, you know, if it doesn't detect it, uh, you know, make sure you plug the adapter in when after you've started up your VM. Otherwise, if you're running Windows or Mac OS or whatever, it's the host OS is going to find the adapter probably first and, and assign it to the host instead of the VM. So it was really simple. Just unplug it, replug it back in. Once the VM's running, it found it. So to install the drivers is, a little, uh, is not too bad. So the first thing I did is um, I like to be root because I don't like running sudo all the time. I know it's probably not the best way of doing things, but um, anyways, I made a directory here. So let's just um, go through and <coughs> do this real quick. So I'm going to make a directory. I'm going to call it uh, Realtek Driver Install. Then I'm going to change into that directory. And from here, I'm going to issue the git pull to install this driver. So they have very good instructions on how to install it several different ways. I used DKMS to install the driver, which was very easy. I, issu I'll, I issued this command here inside the directory. But the first thing you're going to do is copy this directory here. Got to do git git clone here, so I have to type that at front git clone, and then the URL for the git repository. And now I am inside this directory I created. So once we go do that, it's going to pull that down. Once this is pulled down, then it's as simple as running these other commands right here under the DKMS. So I ran this command here. I'm not going to run these again because I've already run the commands before to install the drivers. And But if you need to remove the driver, so you run this one first, installs DKMS, app get install. Then after that, in the same directory, you run the make here and it will install the drivers for you. After the installation of the drivers, I did reboot the VM. And once I did that, the, the card came right up. I was able to do the scans in Wi-Fi and it worked great. No problems. Um, if you need to remove the driver, obviously inside that directory, you can go ahead and type that command to remove the driver. But I'm not going to type these commands because I've already ran them, but this is how I installed it and it worked great. And I, like I said, I want to thank Stefan, I believe it was, that gave me the, the correct GitHub repository that I was lacking to get this working. So. Anyways, so that's how it works. And then once you're in here, you can, um, and it's installed, you can obviously run Wi Fi or whatever you need to do. And when I do that, 
And there it is. It's scanning for all the networks that are available to the card, which is great. Anyways, I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you guys have any uh, comments or, or questions, try to hit me up on LinkedIn or you can hit me up on the YouTube channel. I try to reply to the comments as soon as I can. Um, I do run a business, so I may be busy with clients. Uh, I have an IT consulting business, so I, you know, the day is always different, new challenges. But anyways, thank you guys and have a great day. And like I said, I hope this was helpful.